Hey guys, how are you? Steph here. So, the best job in America pays over $120,000 a year and offers a low stress, healthy work life balance. So, this is an article in Market Watch. I'll put a link to it below. And I'm just going to read a few of the uh, highlights here. Something very interesting for people who are interested in getting into coding. So, a new analysis rates jobs based on medium salary, job satisfaction, work-life balance, stress levels, unemployment rate, and growth in that sector. So it continues, we've had the great resignation, quiet quitting, resistance to going back to the office, and now it turns out people are looking for happiness, stability, flexibility, and a good salary. In 2023, this article, by the way, was just published a couple of days ago, January 10th, so actually yesterday. In 2023, in the wake of the worst days of the pandemic, most U.S. job switchers and others seeking employment want to land a job that at the very least keeps up with the red-hot inflation and provides some level of work-life balance. But they also want to be happy. After all, most Americans spend at least eight hours a day working, most of them most of them without paid time off for workers it's the hundred and twenty one thousand dollar question in an increasingly unpredictable and yet stubbornly tight labor market will wage increases keep up with the 7.1 percent inflation they are also asking whether you can give it your all and still have time for a life outside of work and they're wondering what careers have the promise of a six-figure income high job satisfaction, and enough job openings to make getting hired a realistic opportunity. So let me just scroll down. I won't read the whole article. So they list the most uh, important jobs. And this is data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This is the BLS out of the U.S. So with a medium annual salary of 121000 based on BLS data and salary ranges from other sites, including CareerBuilder. The best job in America is software developer. Software developers write code to build and improve computer applications and programs. I'm just reading what they say in the article. Software developers are becoming increasingly critical for the growth and sustained success of businesses across industries, said Janika Ingram, careers editor at US News. The BOS projects a 25% increase in these positions between 2021 and 2031. The future seems bright for these workers. The BOS projects a 25% increase in their position between 2021 and 2031. Now there's a repeat there. So the 10 year outlook for the occupation is strong and expected to grow at an above average rate. It is predicted to be in high demand because of the rising number of products and services that leverage software. Low unemployment and high medium salary also contribute to the appeal of this career. Most people can take a four year bachelor's degree to qualify as a software developer or take a coding bootcamp, which can last between four and 18 months, according to studydatascience.org. With no professional experience, applying for jobs can be daunting. Software engineering jobs require specific skill. Uh, the site says you should have in-depth knowledge of basic programming like C++ and JavaScript, as well as basic programming experience. Okay, let's jump into some specifics here. So I won't read the rest of the article. You can go check it out yourself. This confirms what I've been telling people for several years now about the whole programming space. I hear every now and then uh, these people on YouTube and elsewhere saying, ah, oh, that's it for software developer. The game is over. I don't know where to get this from because every statistic I've ever seen, and this is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This is, you know, this is the platinum standard, right? It's the opposite. Software development is becoming ever and ever more important and so the jobs keep coming and coming and coming. Yes, more and more people get into software development, but for every new person who jumps into the game, there's probably an extra two more jobs or something becoming available. So there's plenty of jobs in that space. There's no question about that. Of all of the professions out there that pay high, I don't know any of them that allows you to so easily access it like software development. Another cool thing about software development, as they mentioned in the article, you don't need a degree. 
This is what we've been talking about for years. Degrees in software development are almost a waste of time. Even Google talks about this. Apple has mentioned how their top employees who have no degrees are just as performant as their employees who have degrees. The whole notion of a degree, the whole notion of having to get that piece of paper, the certification, is so it's so 1980s. It's very antiquated stuff. It's boomer stuff. I advise people, if you want to get into software development, which is a great choice for the reasons I just cited in this article, you don't need to go spend four years to getting a degree. You shouldn't, in fact, because there's something called opportunity costs that figure into this. So what's opportunity costs? The opportunity cost is a cost of taking an opportunity versus another. So I'll, sp I'll explain it in a very practical way. If you go to school for four years, not only do you have to consider the price of going to school for four years, you gotta pay the tuition, you gotta pay the cost of living for four years, and you're not making money for four years. Whereas if you take a boot camp that lasts four months, eight months, you know, 10 months, a year, then after you've completed that boot camp and you get your job, instead of having to spend another three years in traditional education, not making money, you're now making money. So the person who's going to college has to uh, incur that opportunity to cost, meaning that three years of not earning. Meanwhile, somebody who did the short term, the, the quick boot camp approach, they're making money now. So you always have to weigh not only how much something costs you in terms of raw cash, but also how much it costs you in terms of your time, in terms of you foregoing this opportunity to pursue that opportunity. How about coding as a second career? A lot of people who are in their 30s, no, not 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, they're now looking to pursue another career, a second career, and they want some freedom, they want some flexibility. So again, software development is the key there. Now, when you're looking at freelance software development, freelance, the web is where that dominates. So you're looking at HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, uh, perhaps some PHP, perhaps some uh, Python, and SQL for databases. Think about building e-commerce shops for people, uh, implementing their WordPress, uh, building small systems for a small business. If you're looking at that type of uh, transition to go into the freelance space, you definitely want to get into the web languages. Whereas C Sharp, uh, Java, C++, Kotlin, these are all other programming languages, and they're all cool, by the way. But in terms of freelance, it's the web languages is where the money's at. Again, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Python, to a lesser extent, SQL. So keep that in mind. So if you're thinking about getting into the freelance space, you want to take advantage of all the advantages of being a freelance developer, a web developer, then you want to go into that area there. The cool thing about freelancing is that it's free in terms of the jobs you will take on, the clients you will deal with, when you work, how you will work, why, you know, with whom you work. This is a fantastic way of living. It's a lot of fun. You're free. You don't have to be bound by red tape or bureaucracies. Uh, it's pretty cool. Now, the thing about freelancing, well, there is a startup time. There is this lag time before it starts to ramp up. So you have to transition into freelancing properly and you have to set up your workflows and set up the business properly so that it works like, like a, a well-oiled machine, as they say. One of the tricks of freelancing is to, is to understand the freelance work cycle and the freelance work cycle will dictate how you acquire clients and how you manage your clients. I won't go into it here because it's pretty involved, but that being said, um, you want to have a good stable seven to 10 clients, maybe 10 to 15 clients that you're working with so you can rotate between them. Uh, and this will allow for uh, a consistent flow of income uh, for you. No matter what type of software development you get into is uh, gonna be a great place to get into. It's great because of all the job opportunities, because of relatively high salaries, uh, because of flexibility. Uh, why not, you know, it's pretty cool. Just one last point about the salaries. Now, the medium salary, I think they said it was about 120 k Now, when you first start out, chances are you're not going to start out at the six-figure. The way it works, the you know, six-figure salary, the way it works in the software world is you want to get your job as quickly as possible. So you get in, you may start out at 60, you may start out at 80, who knows, depending on where you live, etc., depending on what you bring to the table, but your very first job as a developer, you have to expect it 
to be not at the medium salary range, right? Chances are it won't be 100K. That's okay because in your first two to three years of you being a pro developer, that's when you really learn the craft. That's when you really become a pro developer. And that's where you will, if you're consistent and diligent in your efforts, that's where your skills will rise quite a bit. And then those that six-figure income will come. So what I tell people who mentor under me, I say, the hardest job to get is that first job. And you want to get that first job, even if the salary is below your expectations, because it will shoot up. Once you get that first year of experience, your value of a developer shoots up quite a bit. So the key is you want to get your foot in the door as quickly as possible to get that first job. If you don't know who I am, I am Steph. You can check me out at UncleSteph.com. I run a boot camp. It's very different from any other boot camp out there. It's based on my proprietary platform. I've been working with schools for well over a decade now, well, schools and districts. And so I have a very optimized and advanced way of delivering curriculum. You will learn how to code at a professional level much more quickly than you thought possible. Not only that, you get the support that you need, live coaching sessions, group coaching sessions. You understand how to run projects. I even get into uh, soft skills training, resume building, uh, managing clients, managing projects, and much, much more. Check it out below, unclesteph.com. Thanks for watching.